What's up, everybody? We're back. It's been a minute. God, we've been engaged for... December, January, February, March, April. Four months. Crazy. Um, time is flying. A lot has happened since you guys have last seen us together outside of Houston. Right. Um, especially when it comes to the engagement. A lot has happened and changed. But we're here to talk to you guys today a little bit about our wedding adventure. Um... We want to start by the process of venue picking, right? Oof. Pain in the... <laughs> Pain in the... Actually, you know what? That's a lie. A venue is not the most painful part of the wedding planning process. Right. It's picking how many people can come. Yeah, that guest list. I don't... That's... That guest list is a... Mm. A bad word. <laughs> yeah, that um, I'm trying to stay PG-13 this time. It's a New Year's resolution I've been failing on, but here we are. Um, the guest list is the hardest part. So you got to figure out how many guests you're going to have. And then based off of that, that's when you can decide on a venue. So like when we were picking the venue, there was a lot of places where it was like, oh, this is nice. And then they would share their capacity and we'd be like, uh, oh, man. that's not going to work. Um, so that's really the the most difficult part. Yeah, that definitely plays into it. On top of the number of people, you need to figure out what city you're getting married yeah. in. For us, outside of the long distance relationship, we also come from two different, complete, completely different cities. Mm -hmm. St. Louis, Missouri. Hey, <clears throat> South suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, but shy town. But we were trying to figure out where we were gonna get married and <clears throat> luckily enough, she did not want to get married in Missouri. No. I, I feel like... <laughs> <laughs> no. Can you tell them why? <laughs> okay, I feel like I've done a lot of things in Missouri, but St. Louis is such a smaller town compared to Chicago. And so, like, when you're looking for a venue, it's only a few venues that people get married at in St. Louis. And I'm not trying to go to the same venue that somebody else I knew already went to. Like, it's only so many times somebody that you know can get married at the same venue. <laughs> but Chicago is a... <laughs> What are you laughing at? Carry on. <laughs> but Chicago is a much larger city. I really like the buildings. I really like the way the city looks. I like that whole vibe. I like the water. Like in St. Louis, we got that dusty little river. Nobody want to take no picture by that. Um, and so I felt like when it came to the the natural beauty of the cities that Chicago was a much prettier city and it had a lot more options as far as menus for us to choose from. I'd agree with that. And it's not that far for like my family to travel. It's only four hours. Speaking of, that was another part. So when we were picking a venue, right, we could have easily chose a destination wedding. We could have done whatever the hell we wanted to do. Part of the reason we chose Chicago outside of her not wanting to get married in Missouri, me being from the area, so I'm familiar, was ease for our guests. Mm -hmm. Since her family is primarily in St. Louis, Missouri area adjacent, it's an easy drive. It's four hours, right? right? And I think that's something you have to think about when it comes to your guests. If you don't care <laughs> about your guests coming or if you're trying to keep the guest count low, destination weddings are definitely an easy way to, you know, say, hey, I was thinking about you, but, mm -hmm. you know, I just want to, you, you, you know, you know. So we, we did Chicago for part of that purpose was making sure that it was easy for some of her older relatives to get there, for some of my... Um, relatives, friends who aren't necessarily in Chicago anymore because of transitions to get back to the city, so. And I just feel like flying into Chicago is a lot cheaper than flying into Missouri for some reason. I don't really, I guess y'all have a larger airport or something? Two larger airports, just to be clear. Yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so first you need to decide on the city that you want to get married in. Then you go picking venues, but honestly, when you want to look at the venues, you need to decide how many people you're inviting. And then go from there because that would have saved us a lot of time i don't see now i don't think we wasted time on capacity issues right mm -hmm. i think the issue for <laughs> us came to some of the amenities of venues let me tell you some venues wanted you to bring your own everything. They just provided the four walls. Literally. They was like, bring your space. own chairs, your own tables. You needed to bring your own floor for the dance floor. I'm like, what? And it's well, what are you providing? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm, I'm going to keep it real candid. There was a venue that I wanted. <clears throat> There's a venue that I had my heart set on. Hmm. I still mourn it. I still do. 
But they came back and told us that it was X about... Gonna be our firstborn child, basically. Literally, like, okay, it was actually, like, maybe two years worth of college tuition. Just for the four walls, y'all. Like, just for the four walls. No tables, no linens, no chairs, no, no food, lights. no... Like, all of that. All, none of it. None of it. And then when you start adding the other stuff, it became... Uh, so I'm a reasonable man. So I let that go. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate you for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was crushed. At that crushed. point, we was going to be living on the side of the road trying to pay for for that. And I wasn't going broke for no wedding. Let's be very clear. So, um, that was something. So, like, okay, we can talk about disappointments. You know, like, he had his disappointment with the wedding. There was this particular church that I really, really wanted. Um, even got over the fact that they had so many restrictions and everything. Like we, So many. My flower girl wasn't going to be able to throw flowers out. I don't know if Jesus was in that. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know if the good Lord... I don't know if he was with that. No, nah, I, I don't think so. I don't know. But it, I had this vision in this church. And then, you know, a lot of our stuff was on hold just finding out whether or not we can get the church. And, you know, we didn't even get the church. Um, so that was a disappointment in itself. Because let me tell you, I had already started scoping out pictures. But I should have known something was up because I never actually got to step foot in the church. So each time we tried to go and actually visit it, something always happened to where I never got to go in. So maybe that was God's way of saying a while ago, like, this wasn't the place for you and to, to ease the disappointment. You won't even envision, like, you won't even step foot into this place. She was so disappointed, so, though. I was disappointed, but... <laughs> so we're clear. You know, it is what it is. We do have um, a church that I... It's equally as beautiful. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm really excited about that, so, you know... It's cheaper, too. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear. Hold on. Look, let me reel that back. For anyone interested in getting married in a church, if you thought the churches were free, <laughs> if you thought the church's services were free, <laughs> if you thought the good too. Lord was on your side, let me the tell you. The church wants money, too. <laughs> it's like passing a collection plate. Y'all better pay up what you owe. Now, throwing that out there. But, yeah, no, I think that was a, that was another blow, but I don't think it was, like, really a blow because I think for us, at least in venue selection, mm -hmm. everything that we got kind of fell into our laps, and yeah. it was, like, the vibe and the people. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes for the vendors. It was the vibe and the people, right? Yeah. So, when we were doing our venue selection process, we started in Google Drive, Literally. Started looking up uh, all these different venues. There was a spreadsheet. There were Each venue had its own folder. I think at one point we maybe had 10 plus venues in the um, folder just to like... Gather information. Sending emails, asking for proposals, negotiating. Mm, I'll come back to that. Negotiating. Um, and then also, you know, just trying to figure out like what the vibe was, like the overall... Yeah. How, how it felt. And what they offered. Yeah. And so then once we compiled all that information into our spreadsheet, we had a look at it and it was like, okay, I'm going to pick my top five. You pick your top five. And so we went through, we highlighted our top five. Some of our fives overlapped. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, cool. We don't got to think about this. But then it was some other ones where it was just like, logically, that doesn't make sense. Like, why are we even trying yeah. to go look at this place? Because you're not going to be able to go look at all 15 places that you write down. So we needed to narrow it down to go look at five places. And so when we did that, you know, we had a good, was it five or six? I think we did six. We looked at six places. Yes, yeah, six. Um, Some of them canceled themselves out because let me tell you this, people are going to advertise their best work on the internet. They're going to find the best lighting, the best pictures, the best everything of their space. And that's why it, it's extremely important for you to actually go and look at that space. Because you don't get them deposits back. Let's be clear. They say that. I swear to shit. <laughs> you're not getting your deposit back. <laughs> like the deposit is to secure your date. And if you don't choose to go with them, you will not get that back. And talking about securing dates is a different subject. So if you want to get married at one space, so if you want to have your reception and your ceremony at one space, cool. You don't have to worry about dates and all that stuff. You just make sure that one place has your date secure. But for us, we want to get married inside a church, and then we want to have our reception in a nice place. So it's like we had to, one, check to make sure the church had the date available, and then we had to go with the reception. And then we found this one place that we thought we were going to have our reception at, and they didn't even have our date available. <laughs> Another disappointment, actually. And I'll also, okay, I will also take this one to the head. This is also a misread. Again, firing off 50, 11 emails, like, yeah. in the span of January till April, basically, talking to different vendors. This one, I mean, this venues, 
This one venue did say that they were not available on the date that we wanted, but they were available on the alternative date that we were considering. And it was an oversight because we were only considering the alternative date in case the church that I really wanted wasn't available on our original date. And so when the church wasn't available, we said what we're not compromising on is the original date that we want um, because it has a special, it has a special meaning to us. Like, so yeah. we like, okay, we can't get the church. We can't get his fancy venue. We go have this date. And so, you know, we thought we had all of our things picked out. And then we found out that that place didn't have that date available. And we were just like, oh, man. But the other place that we were considering, because our top two after viewing places, we had two top two places. Two top two places. Two top two places? I don't think you can have more than two in your top two. Bro. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, run that back. Run that back. After viewing the six venues, we had two Top places. <laughs> two in our top two. You done? No, I continue. <laughs> so between those two, one was my number one and one was his number one. And so we had went, you know, we were going to go with the one that was my number one. Um, and then we found our home. The day wasn't even available for our date. And so we were just like, whatever, you know, we're not going with this place. We're going to go with the other place because they're equally as beautiful. They just offer different things. We liked who our day of coordinator would be for each event. It's like they both, them both were were like great from the moment that we started emailing them from the moment that we actually went to go tour the place um we we appreciated different things about each place but when it came down to it it was like what was gonna work for us and for us it was that date and so we ended up going with Phelan's top place what are you done uh, okay uh, but yes no we did we ended up we ended up going there super excited i think the guests are going to enjoy the atmosphere, and we're going to make sure that we get our money's worth um, out of it from top to bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be very clear. And y'all better make sure y'all get my money's worth. <laughs> For those who are invited. Um, anyway. Disclaimer. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I love everybody. I really do. But again... I don't know if y'all know the average cost of a plate for any venue, but that's another conversation for another day. Well, Not everyone can be invited. And that's another thing, too, with venues of, like, some places... The plate included drinks. Other places, the place did not include drinks. Some places wanted you to bring your own drink. It is just a lot. It's a lot of moving pieces, especially and if you don't have a wedding planner. Yeah, so, oh, we should have said that from the beginning. We're doing this with the help of Phelan's mom. Um, extremely helpful. Young cat. You know, and, um, you know, our parents are both contributing um, in different ways. But yeah, but no. when it comes to planning, <laughs> no when it comes to planning, we don't call our planner, set meetings, and she go talk to the places. It's literally us communicating through an email address that we made. Mm -hmm. um, I to will have say, all wet and stuff. Get a shared email address <laughs> so it all goes through one spot, and everybody can put eyes on it if they would like to ask a question about something. Yeah, because yikes, freaking yikes! But yeah, we didn't have a, we don't have a wedding planner, a formal wedding planner. Mom's has been helping out because, you know, Mary done the whole thing. She has the event plan in her mind. So she's been the godsend when she's not getting on my nerve. Love you, Kat. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, like Kamara was saying, we chose an all-inclusive venue um, as our final end-all, be-all venue, which we are so excited for you all to see. You gotta tell the people what all-inclusive means. Yes, that's, I was, I was getting, I was getting, okay, kidding, I was just letting her know I'm excited. Okay. Damn, I can't be excited. You can be excited, but I'm just saying you dropping terms that people don't necessarily know. When you say all-inclusive resort, everybody like, oh, it got drinks, you know, and it's like, I don't gotta pay for none of the food, but is this, we need to tell what's Is this for marriages, y'all? Because, uh, mm. it's my turn to the right table gonna, talk in a second. Gonna, gonna that, <laughs> let's be fair. Like, no. That's, that's you need to tell the people. <laughs> I'm going to tell them, damn. Oh. All-inclusive venue. So in this venue that we chose, they um, are providing a wedding cake. Mm -hmm. They are providing, well, it comes with food. So plated dinner and or buffet. We chose the plated dinner. Yeah, we got time. Germs. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't play around with that. Y'all COVID or not. I want y'all breathing. I, love I was food. never the type. And y'all see. <laughs> right. Was never so the somebody type. could bring y'all place to you. And then we also have the bar package, which is probably one of the most expensive things outside of the food if anybody is aware 
when it comes to wedding planning, food and beverage are going to run you up and down a hill when it comes to spending money. So that is also included. And, we and have it the came cocktail. with different tiers. Yeah. And we have the cocktail hour, mm -hmm. which is going to be included because... With past hors d'oeuvres. We don't want people just standing around... Looking stupid. Looking all silly while we're going to go take pictures because you also have to travel. You have to remember we're having our ceremony at a different place than what we're going to have the reception. So... We're going to go take pictures. Us in the wedding party are going to go take pictures. And then our guests should start to drive and arrive at where we're going to have our reception. And so when they arrive, we don't want them just standing around. Obviously, people may be hungry. We want to give them drinks. We want to give them some hors d'oeuvres mm -hmm. to help them out. You know, get to your stomach until it's time to really eat. Did you have to think about hors d'oeuvres? Okay. Yeah, I did. Because okay. I, I felt the... I was like... I was going to say advertisers, but we wouldn't at a restaurant. Uh, <laughs> so I said hors d'oeuvres. I said it right. You did. It's I know what parent bears Anyways, come on. You know I mean? You did say <clears throat> top two and two. But anyway, so yeah. I that's was thinking the, about that song. She was top two and I'm not number two. or something like that. It's Drake's Top five, maybe top two. We don't know I'm not two. I mean, either way it goes. You said two top and two, two when yeah, you can okay. only have two and a two. Just Fine. Let it go. Anyway, yeah, I'm. I'm trying. I'm really, I might change my Twitter handle to that. Um, anyway, so we chose an all-inclusive venue, one for the ease of everything, having the access to everything. Now that we have tables, chairs, linen, all that right? The linen. table, the chairs, the linen, different Basically. colors mm -hmm. of linen um, are there, and it's not like the basic banquet chairs are actually um, really nice Thank shibari you. chairs. So you'll find that chair upgrades also will run you depending on the venue that you choose. And then we don't want to do BYOB just for the simple fact that, again, that's another, if um, the venue doesn't have a liquor license, your whoever your caterer is has to have the license for that. And you have to pay additional bartenders to do that. At the end of the day, when you start totaling things together and then Everything all the moving costs. pieces, Everything costs. you're probably going to spend just the, the same amount of money, if not close to, for an all-inclusive venue that you might for um, a la carte type venue mm -hmm. for the most part so for us and the ease of things all-inclusive work better right but what i will say <laughs> in the process of selecting a venue mm -hmm. patience is key because i can't tell you how many times whether it was an email or just like even some of the tours like when you go it's just like what the hell is this like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> See, and I just, I, I, I said I have been doing terrible this year. Damn it. But no, seriously, like, what the hell was going on? So um, definitely encourage those tours. I think you learn a lot. You also learn about the people, the staff, the environment. For the two that were in our top two, um, we, when we went to see them, the people were great. Um, one ended up giving us... Nothing bunk cakes as a welcome gift. I know, with yeah. a nice written card. Oh, God, I'm going to miss her. <laughs> she catered to the fat boy in me. Okay. And that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. Outside of the professionalism, that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. And then the other one comped our meal by 50% when we went to eat there. So, I mean, it, it they're people for, for me, right? And this is something that she knows very well. For me, um... Your people skills and professionalism will get you my business any day. Right. And for venues in particular, since you are a large part of a wedding, you got to have it. Because not only are we going to, we're going to work with them within this time frame of now and then until our actual day. But like on the day of, our guests are going to be in their hands. And so it's very important for you to have great people. Like not only did we meet the person that would be the day of coordinator for us. We met her boss. We met the lady that's going to be over the staffing for the food. People who will have the potentially will be our bartenders. Like, I need to make sure that all those people are going to give off the energy and the positive vibes that I want my guests to experience within this day. How awful is it when you go to a wedding and people mad when you paying them to be there? Like, you serving me my plate, but when I ask you for something, you got to add it to You know, it's just like, I don't, I don't want that, like, personality... Your personable skills, mm -hmm. all of that, that means a lot. Also, another thing to consider when picking a venue is parking. Especially I think it's child. super important. Right. So, depending parking on the area. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because had we not went to go tour some of those places, we would not have seen the area. Yeah, that's true. That, yeah, okay. So, I'm going to start with parking and then double back to area. 
for parking, especially in like larger cities. So for instance, Chicago, mm -hmm. a lot of people know that it's street parking where you have to pay or garage parking where you have to pay, right? So for us, it was trying to figure out, well, what does this look like in terms of um, getting our guests there? How easy is it to, you know, find parking? How many parking areas are around? Um, it was uh, the accessibility of the venue. Like there's a lot that went into the actual consideration. Like we said, the, the two that we were considering really great. The one that we considered offered um, validating parking for all of our guests. So mm -hmm. for if guests choose to drive, which I doubt, but if guests choose to drive, we have X amount of validation parking so they can park their car in the garage, not have to worry about paying this additional fee. Right, because you already got to pay for your hotel. Right, you know. on top of all this other stuff. So that helped out a lot. And then the other one discounted the parking rate um, and threw in a couple other things. So that worked out nicely, but we didn't end up choosing them. But to her point about area, right? Some of the venues that we chose when we when, when we saw them, them, they were nice online, but when you get there in person, some of the areas was real sketchy, y'all. I'm not gonna make yeah. it. Like I thought somebody was gonna get shanked outside at one point. Uh, no shade, I'm not even gonna throw out sides because I know some people watch this are from Chicago, so I'm not doing that. But it was it was an interesting it was an interesting setup. The accessibility wasn't there, parking wasn't there. It would have been really it would have took longer to get from again, we're doing two venues. It would have took longer to get from the church to some of them compared to some of the other ones. So we were trying to make sure that we kept it all as low close stress. as possible. Like low stress for our guests. Of course, like, you know, when we tell our guests where we're actually going to have like our wedding and um, our reception and everything at, we'll definitely make sure we got pictures of how to get there. Map, you know, like we're going to make sure that we get we bring back map quest, y'all. But don't cut it out. Hey. <laughs> but hey. when it like I need to feel like, OK, this is this is a cool area. And just some of those venues, it was just like, mm, nah, I'm good, love. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy. This is good for somebody else. But going back to my previous point about negotiating, which I think is a really, really big part of wedding planning in general. And I'm not just saying this for venues. I'm just saying this in general, but I will speak specifically to venues since that's what we've been talking about. The price that they give you is not always the end-all, be-all price. There is definitely wiggle room, especially it's, right now. Right, that. like since a lot of people are trying to bounce back from not having any events for a any, year right for a whole year people are hurt so being able to discuss like hey you know here's what we can do right like hey so for for instance um the venue says that they can include xyz 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 like four things or whatever and then you're like mm, okay thanks um i was talking to this other venue and like they did mm -hmm. they gave this complimentary um this that and the third is there any way that you can match that? Or we can't necessarily afford this, but we really like this space. Is there anything that we can do? You'd be surprised on how much you can save on a venue. And I'm talking like... Thousands. High-end thousands, actually. So I would definitely say closed mouths don't get fed. So once you build the rapport with the venues that you are looking at, Go in and, you know, ask the questions, have the email conversations saying. Because, that, because I mean, honestly, we ain't, we don't, nobody has, I mean, maybe some of y'all do got it like that, but we don't. And if you do, have it like you that. can donate to our wedding fund. <laughs> Please see the link anywhere on any of these pages and I will give you the information to a bank account to send the money to. Just saying. But, you know, he's in his last month, two weeks, whatever, <laughs> of school where, and you know, I'm full time teaching, but like, we're at a transition period. Um, starting new jobs and all that good stuff. Is it good? No, but she's right. I mean, like, it's there's a, a it's lot. It's a new chapter. There's a lot that comes with that, you know. There's a lot going on. We're moving. Yeah. New jobs. Yeah. Whole nine yards, right? Look, new place. Right. So new it's place. just like a lot. So even in negotiating, we negotiated the venue deposit price down because a lot right of venues now, require a lot up front. They want 50%, 25%. <laughs> it's like 25% of how much? I said, excuse me? 10? 5? Maybe? Come on, right. work with me, bro. So definitely make sure you guys ask the questions because you'll be very surprised on what some people are willing to do. And then also, some venues have hotel partnerships or like hotels that yeah, they frequently work with. 
and they'll be able to put you in contact with them in order to figure out, hey, you know, I'm working with so-and-so and I just wanted to see what this looked like for our date. Some hotels will have wiggle room. Some hotels will, will not. not. And our firm in there will not, even if you're an honors member. And I have a many, many, many feelings hey, about... Hey, that's not what this is about. This is not a review on the hotels that don't want to honor your points and all this other stuff. And this is us telling us, tell, telling us, this is us <laughs> telling the people how to be successful. So just excuse him here. There's a lot of emails that will be left on red. <laughs> yeah, that, basically. Um, so no, for real, I definitely think that uh, make sure you guys leverage as much as you can. Um, we've leveraged YouTube and like Instagram and other things that we have done in the past in order to get some discounts. So if y'all popping out in the social media realm, trust me, I'm not popping. So if y'all are popping in the social media realm, use that to your advantage. I'm not popping. Okay, I'm just looking at you. No, you gave me that. We'll discuss this off camera. <laughs> if y'all are popping, make it work for you. Cool, cool? Definitely. You got anything else, ma'am? Um, y'all here side eye me. Excuse me? I said what I said. You think we're gonna make it? I'm only doing this once, so. <laughs> I'm not talking about domestic! <laughs> Y'all seen it! Y'all seen it! Y'all seen it! She beats me. Don't be putting it on camera. Nobody beat you. I feel like I said this we several times. Taps. Anyways, um, continue to just be patient with yourself during this process. Um, it's okay if one person is doing a little bit more than the other, you know. I. Don't have the capacity to send these emails to these people. So, Phelan sends the emails to the people. I read the emails. Like, yeah. I give him like, oh, this is what I think or whatever the case may be. But that's his lane. That ain't my lane. Now, when it comes to setting up the place the way I want it to look like, I got it. I can do this. But baby gonna send the emails. Baby gonna get the price down. The vision, I'm gonna try to bring that to life. Aren't you the one who didn't know what you <laughs> wanted to look like when you I've been on Pinterest. It. I've been looking some things up. Be easy. You trying to embarrass me in front of people? I'm just trying to make the records <laughs> clear because now I, I sound like it. a secretary. No, you're not a secretary. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I would also like to let it be known that for a while she didn't know what she wanted her wedding to look like. You're right, I did. And now she does, and I'm concerned. We might have birthed a bridezilla. <laughs> TBD. You all will find out. Groomzilla. <laughs> and on that note, everybody. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for tuning in to our video. We'll be back mm -hmm. with y'all with a few more videos. We want to talk about vendors. We want to talk about bridesmaids and groomsmen. The boxes, the proposals. Like we want to, we just we want to share our experience with you all, so you can get an understanding of what these next months are going to be like. And have been like leading up to our wedding. Hashtag face chemistry. Yes, that's been the hashtag for four years now. Y'all should know. Period. There's already content out there for that. Go look it up. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs>